to speak. And so I've established a website called namesofthedead.com. Namesofthedead.com. And I invite all those people who suffered the terrible tragedy of losing a loved one, whether a son or a spouse or an uncle or a mother or father, all of us who have lost somebody close to us because they had no health coverage, because they had no health insurance, and because they died, I propose that we all go to this website, namesofthedead.com, and we name them. And you can go to our website at democracynow.org for the interview with Harvard University professor Dr. Steffi Woolhandler, who is co-author of that study. And here in New York, dozens of people gathered outside the offices of the news network CNN Wednesday to call for the ouster of anchor Lou Dobbs. Dobbs has been accused of anti-Latino bias in his coverage of immigration issues. The journalist Roberto Lovato addressed the crowd. What comes out of Lou Dobbs' mouth is hatred for Latinos and undocumented immigrants in the United States, is support for the extremists that are actually uh, killing immigrants, like the Federation of Immigration Reform and the Minutemen, whose members in Arizona are responsible for the murder of nine-year-old Brisenia Flores and her father. So Lou Dobbs is not telling his, his audience to go out and kill and hurt and attack immigrants, but he provides a platform for those that do. The protest was organized by the website bastadobs.com. And you can go to democracynow.org to see our hour interview with Lou Dobbs. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. And welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. A professor at the University of Alaska has lost his federal grant funding for being an outspoken advocate for environmental protection. Rick Steiner, a prominent marine conservation specialist, has worked at the University of Alaska for the past three decades. For years, he has criticized what he considered were irresponsible actions by the oil industry, beginning with the 1989 Exxon Valdez oil spill. Last week, a university lawyer rejected a claim filed on behalf of Steiner to overturn a decision to pull his $10,000 grant from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, known as NOAA. Steiner had received the money as an extension agent in NOAA's Sea Grant program. Professor Steiner says university administrators caved under pressure from NOAA to silence his public criticism of an offshore Arctic oil development in its decision. A university lawyer wrote, if a recipient of grant funding, quote, uses his position and his time to, for example, advocate for or against a particular development project, the funding agency may have a legitimate concern. In addition to pulling the grant funding, the university moved Steiner's office against his wishes into the Maine Marine Advisory Program office. We called both NOAA and the University of Alaska to invite them on the program. They both declined to be on, but they did provide us with statements. Before we go to that, let's go first to the man at the center of the storm, Rick Steiner. He joins us from Anchorage, Alaska. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Professor Steiner. It's good to have you with us. I wanted to start off um, with this uh, ruling by the public employee for environmental responsibility peer. In its decision, the university cited pressure from the grant agency, NOAA, that's the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, to silence your public critique of the oil industry's Arctic development plans. Explain exactly the stand you took, the news conference you held, Professor Steiner. Well, good morning, Amy and Juan. It's great to be with you again. Um, this is a very simple issue, actually. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, as you said, uh, pressured the university ad administrators to terminate my grant funding, which I've had for 30 years here in Alaska. Many people have. Um, and as a result of that, the university, instead of standing up to them and doing the right thing and saying, no, we don't do business that way, we have something called academic freedom for our faculty, they caved and did terminate that federal grant funding. Uh, they covered it for one year with other state funds, but that's irrelevant. The, the bottom line issue here is that the University of Alaska really runs on oil money. I've been somewhat critical of what I consider to be irresponsible oil company proposals and projects and activities in Alaska, and thus the university punished me for it. And I, I think the bottom line is there should be uh, protections within academia 
for faculty to seek and teach the truth without fear and without faith.